1950s Hollywood. I guess if you can find anyone that's still alive, they'll tell you that it was a cesspool full of pedos and cocksuckers. Where all you gotta do is throw a rock, or you hit one or the other. And if you're lucky, you'll hit both. And as soon as you hit the streets, you're fair game. Don't believe me? Just ask actress Lana Turner. In the 30s and 40s, she was Hollywood's biggest property. Her movies regularly raked in 50 mil. But by the 1950s, her star was fading. I guess the Californian sun can be cruel. And her paychecks got smaller and smaller. And there was always a bevy of beauties jumping on the couch to take her place. And Turner, with a string of bad relationships and failed marriages, figured the only thing good about her being in Hollywood was getting knocked up and having her daughter Cheryl. But I guess that wasn't enough. With her fall from grace from the Hollywood A-listers, she started to mix with a tawdry crowd. And one of those bad boys was mobster. Johnny Stampinano, a Dago grease ball with connections to mob boss Mickey Cohen. And Johnny, known as a gigolo, had an eye for the ladies. And there were rumors going around that he was more than just a stepfather to Lana's 14-year-old daughter Cheryl, who was growing up fast. But Stampinato was a bit of a hothead, and he had a reputation around town. In one incident, when he figured Lana's co-star in a movie, Sean Connery, was getting too close to her, he went to the set and he pulled a gun on Connery. But Connery, no slouch in the tough guy department, took the gun off him and pistol whipped him in front of the cast and crew. But Stompinato didn't leave the rough stuff for just the men. And there were rumors that he was regularly knocking Lana around. And maybe the pretty blonde liked it, who could say? But it was on April 4th, 1958, at about eight o'clock at night. Cops were called to an address the Turner had been renting for just over two weeks. And there was Stompinano, laying spread out on the floor. It was by Turner's own account that her and her gigolo lover got into an argument and he'd started slapping her around. And her daughter, fearing that Johnny was gonna kill her mother, entered the room with a knife that she'd found on the kitchen counter. Then Stompinato came at her and he walked into that knife. With his last words being, my God, Cheryl, what have you done? But when paramedics got there, he was already dead. They took Cheryl, who was still a juvenile, into custody, and it was the talk of the town. It was during the trial that many close associates believed that Turner gave the performance of her career, because there were rumors that it was her who killed her gigolo lover, which came home early from a shoot and found her boyfriend balls deep in her daughter. And when she did, Cheryl accepted that she had it coming to her and took the rap without squawking. And after a few months in juvie, they cut her loose. But the shadow of guilt would hang over Turner for the rest of her life. But I guess that's just another date in true crime history.